Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be melting down part of one of these propellers. These propellers were both given to me from a friend of mine. They're both garbage, they no longer work. As you can see, it's kind of bent up and nicked up. And I'm gonna be cutting them up into smaller pieces so I can actually use them and fit them into my crucible. After cutting the first chunk off, I noticed, you know, it's actually too big to fit into my crucible. So I cut off two smaller pieces that will fit into the crucible. And I think that both of these pieces together is enough to fill this pattern. Now you're probably wondering, how did I get this pattern? Well, I made it. Let me show you how. I carved out these pieces from 4.8 millimeter foam using my CNC machine. I designed it using a free program called Inkscape. I carved out four pieces in order to make the spearhead. I have two larger pieces and two decorative smaller pieces. Because the ends were flat and I wanted it to have a sharp edge when I'm all finished, I set up my hot wire cutter to cut that edge. When all the edges were cut, it's time to glue it together. I'm using the fast grab tacky glue. This glue is really good to use because it tacks up fairly quickly, but takes 24 hours to dry. This is really good because it gives you time to move the pattern around and get it in the proper position it needs to be before it hardens up. All the pieces are glued together. I'm gonna to let this sit for 24 hours and then I'm going to glue a sprue onto the bottom. And this is where the molten metal will flow into the pattern. After 24 hours and the glue has dried, it's time to add a coating to the foam pattern. I didn't videotape the process of me actually applying it, but what I did was I mixed some household wall plaster with water, and then I added some sand to the mix. This will give it a harder shell and contain most of the molten metal. I let the coating sit for about 48 hours to really let all the moisture in the shell evaporate out of it and dry. So it is now solidified and I'm heading to the garage and we're gonna start the cast. I'm going to be using this crucible here that I primarily use for brass. You can see on the outside of the crucible, it looks like it's in pretty rough shape, but the inside still looks fairly good. So I don't think there's going to be a problem. In order to melt the brass, I'm going to use my Castmaster Lite GG5000 propane furnace. When melting metal, it's always good to place a piece of cardboard underneath of the crucible. It helps prevent the crucible from sticking to the plinth block underneath of the crucible. It doesn't always work, but it helps a lot. foam casting process for this spearhead. This is quite simple really. I'm just taking the pattern that I created out of foam that I coated with the wall plaster and sand and I'm going to put it into a container filling it with dry sand all the way to the top and this sand has to be dry because if there's any moisture in the sand it could potentially ruin the hard coating that I applied to the foam.
I let this set for about 15 minutes before I removed it from the sand. You never want to remove this prematurely. You always want to make sure the metal has time to solidify before removing it. I was pretty confident that this worked because when I was pulling up on it, it gave me a little bit of tension. And sure enough, we had a good cast today. I was really expecting it to sizzle a lot more than it actually did. Now that it cooled off for a while, I'm going to scrape away any of the remaining plaster that was still stuck to the spearhead. I'm going to head inside and cut it down and clean it up even more. I'm going to try to do this using some basic tools that I have around the garage. Something that most people that do any type of woodworking or metalworking should have. Like a Dremel tool, a hacksaw, or some sort of grinding wheel or grinding disc. I'm going to use the grinding wheel on all the sides on the edges to shapen it up and remove any of the slag that possibly bled out of that plaster coating. And I'm going to sand it down with 600 grit and just try to make it look pretty nice. I think it looks good. So now it's time to find something to attach it to. And well, lucky for me, I have something. It's an old squeegee that I had that I haven't used in over three years. And it looks to me like this will fit perfectly. Now that that's removed, it's time to fit it to the spearhead. And it looks like I just have to cut off the threads that I didn't even use for the squeegee. In reality, I could remove the spearhead when I'm finished and just connect the squeegee to it if I needed it again. So now I need to form it so I'm going to be able to fit the spearhead inside of this wood. So I'm just going to cut two slots and carve out the slots with the bandsaw. Then I'm going to mount it to my bench and drill two holes into the top that are going to protrude through the bottom. I will then mark the holes on the spearhead and drill two holes in the spearhead as well. I'll be fastening the spearhead to the shaft using these two little pins. Now that that's finished and fastened, I didn't really like the way it looked. So I grabbed some copper wire that I had laying around and I untwined it so I had one strand. And once I have one strand, I'm going to just wrap the bottom of this. Well guys, it's all wrapped with copper wire. I think it looks a lot better this way than it did without it. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Also, if you did like this video, head over to my other videos. I'm sure I have a lot of other videos that I think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.